And we're back. <laughs> Clearly, Pain Gaming is in this match, obviously by all the uh, the chat sounds. <laughs> we're back, though, guys. This is the International 2018 South American Main Regional Qualifiers. We've got Pain Gaming versus Midas Club. Two Brazilian teams going to be going back to back here. I'm casting with D2 Bias. I mean D2 Bowie. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as usual, I am your caster, Moxie. This is going to be a fun game. I'm very much looking forward to it. Yeah, and one interesting thing. Uh, Ping Gaming, they had first pick, but they banned the IO anyways. So is this uh, next level play? Do they dislike IO and they don't want to give it to Hiko? I don't know. I'm interested. I feel like most of the bands that we see coming out against Midas Club are generally based around Hiko, which has got to feel pretty good as a player, right? Yeah, for sure. It's just unusual because uh, when you have first pick, you can always force the enemy team to get uh, to get the IO band and you can you know, get another hero. So uh, I'm curious as to why uh, they ban it themselves. I'm, have you ever seen Pain Gaming picking IO? I'm trying to think about it and I feel like maybe they don't play the hero. No, I haven't seen them play it. Oh, so maybe that's why. I'm sure they play it, but I'm, because... maybe they don't feel super comfortable with it. Maybe it just doesn't mm -hmm. work in a lot of their drafts. All right. That's a weakness. All right. We know it, guys. That's it. That's, that's how, how you take down game. Pain Gaming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, very right. specific bands coming out. Visage, of course, is a Wii specialty, as is the Wii Ranger. And they've been picking it up during the first phase a lot of the time, so... Definitely worth that first ban phase. Uh, the Naga Siren, of course, GRD, you do not let the king get that hero. You also don't let Flea get that hero, but that's a story for another time, another game. Uh, and then, interesting that they ban out that Kunkka Bowie. That's a kind of an early Kunkka ban. Why do you think they're afraid of that? Hmm, that's, uh, that's, that's true. Uh, maybe they want to pick um, another support that doesn't really like Kunkka that much? I'm trying to think about it. I do know that they played on Weeha, but I'm not sure uh, King RD actually likes it. Like, King RD likes those heroes that do a lot of damage, they're mobile, and that's not really uh, Kunkka. So, uh, I guess we have to wait and see, but that's interesting. You don't see Kunkka ban the first phase very often. I'm not sure why you would ban it. It's probably, it probably has to do with their own draft and what do they want to pick. So maybe they want to get a core that gets ca counter to the Kunkka. Sky Mage. There's uh there's our good friend Skywrath Mage picked up from Midas Club. That's gonna be RZS on that and wouldn't be sp okay. Beastmaster. They're gonna get the sword Beastmaster. Yeah, pretty standard opener. You do have you no know, it's your buddy system there, the Skywrath Mage Beastmaster. They can get kills very often. They have a lot of harassing lane with those axes and the arcane bow. But it's nice. Pretty pretty strong opener by Midas. And what's the what's the follow up here from Pain? Are they gonna try to grab themselves their position five? Are they gonna get the Duster Hero here? Or are we gonna see something coming out for the Tavo? All right, we see the Duster. And just they didn't go for Tavalier, right? There was a Pangolier left in the pool. Yeah. They could so uh, I... they could have gone a little wild here. Yeah, that's true. They actually ban the they do ban the Bloodseeker. So if they want, if it's not banned, oh, there it is. <laughs> it gets banned straight away. The Blood Seeker, pretty hard counter to the Pangolier because of Rupture. Mm -hmm. I do like the Warlock, though, because sometimes you see Beastmaster being picked as a counter to Warlock or Oracle being counter to a counter. Just because you can dispel the heal, you can dispel the Fatal Bonds with both of those heroes. But if the Skyrath Mage being there, it's most likely going to be a position 5 Skyrath Mage, although I know that he could play the hero, so... It could be uh, any position, but I, I feel like a Warlock pick. Very strong, maybe even stronger than the Pangolier, just because of... There's not a lot of heroes that do the same thing that Warlock does. And there's a lot of offlaners that can create chaos. I'm pretty sure that's an RZS Skyrim. I'd be very surprised if Hiko picks it up, but... You know, I have been surprised in these games before, and uh, they always really enjoy trying to mess with me once they pick their heroes, because they will uh, pick each other's heroes for the hats and then switch it up later on, so... That's true. Man, I'm getting uh, blown up on Twitter right now because I, I said I played Legion Jungle Legion once, Bowie. <laughs> it was one time, you guys! I had to try it! You do what you check gotta do to win. Check her Dota buff. 
I don't See even think it games. shows. It was so long ago. It was so <laughs> long ago. Okay, I do like the Tinker Van. They do have the Beastmaster and Midas. They are known for Tinker. A lot of games we saw uh, the Tinker and the Beastmaster combination working pretty well. So that's that's cute. It's scary though too. You've the... got Mandy and Suits. They both play Tinker. They're both incredible with the hero. So by banning that out, I think that's a really smart idea because you don't know who's going to be playing it and then who the core would actually end up being for a safe lane. So, mm -hmm. so what do they go for now? Uh, you said that you think that's an RZ character, so they yes. are looking for position 4. Tusk is open. Not the greatest versus Sand King because you can always burrow strike uh, out of the shards, but it's decent versus Warlock. You can also save people from the upheaval, so that's nice. Uh, you can dodge some of the Fatal Bonds damage with the double save as well. It's it's actually a pretty solid hero here. They might they might get that one. We frequently talk about Hiko playing that hero as well, which I'm sure Hiko probably wishes we'd stop because I'm sure that's going to make it a bigger target on his back. Uh, but Tusk, not a super popular hero in the meta right now, but the way that he plays it is very, very skillful. He's able to go and position himself very nicely, do a lot of saves. So it's still in the pool, it's still an option. Uh, I kind of would like to see him play something maybe a little bit different this time, but... All right, there we go. It's either it's either gonna be a Hiko Clockwork or a sword. No, it's not a sword clock. Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh, there's a Beastmaster. Nope, that's a Hiko Clockwork. All right, I got my wish. Something different. That's nice. I I like the Clockwork versus Sand King and Warlock. They're laners that rely a lot of on mana, so those cogs are down. They they hinder the lane stage quite nicely. And the Skyrath Mage the the flare yep. down into the cogs is gonna be so nice. That's true. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice combo. Mm. Now, what do they get here for pain gaming? This still might be a offlane tanking, but it's nope. It's gonna oh. be offlane Magnus. It could Me. be Weeha Magnus. He actually plays a lot of it in pubs. He plays it also not in the mid lane either. He, really? I've seen no, I've seen him play it. Uh, they've actually sent HFN mid and they've sent Weeha into the offlane using the mm. Magnus. They they're flexible with this. I like this. I like this a lot actually. I also just it's love also when we another... see a hero that we don't normally see because we see the same heroes over and over and over when we're doing That's these true. qualifiers. So it's exciting to see uh, something a little different. And the wombo combo potential, right? You get a uh, reverse polarity. Warlock gets off those fatal bonds, drops the rock, and then King RD finishes it up with the epicenter. And of course, you know, HFN is just murdering everyone or farming or both because, you know, that's, that's just how HFN rolls. <laughs> yeah, that's a great enabler for HFN because he likes those melee heroes. The farm, uh, the, and he's also a hero that doesn't care about cogs because you can always skewer away. The problem is that sometimes, you know, you want to jump in, there, there's cogs there, you get knocked out, your RP does not land on anyone, so you do have to watch out for uh, for that, but overall, pretty decent hero. Ooh. So I, it is I a don't, hero that mm. combos with the Magnus, and it's also, so it's a deny pick and also a Mandy hero. I don't, don't like, like when it? they pick this up for them, Bowie. La, 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 la. <sighs> yeah, it's it's not. A lot of the times it doesn't look great in pro games just because Face of the Void he doesn't offer a lot of aggression in lane and you do want aggression in your lanes. But it is a good combo with the Skyrath Mage. You do have uh, the attack speed aura from the Beastmaster, so the Void is going to be a little bit stronger. And I guess you also don't want to give the Face of the Void away to HFN, especially since they don't have any bans right now. They do have that fourth pick, and I feel like Pain Gaming they could actually smash that up. I feel like if Midas uh, doesn't. Yeah, the Faceless Void Pain Gaming might. I just, every time I see them play with this, and it's it's nothing against Mandy. It's absolutely nothing against me. I just feel like it's not <laughs> uh -huh, that uh -huh. strong of a hero right now. And, like, the way that these teams are playing, the way that the meta is, where you just run at each other's face, you gotta have so much damage online if you're gonna have a Faceless Void get picked up for the safe line because it takes forever for him to get what he needs. Uh, yeah, he's pretty survivable because he's able to just, you know, queue out a lane if he's getting too much harassed, but... Uh, and and you know he's going for that battle fury. I hope not. You know it's, it's Mandy. I'm like I'm like 99% sure we're seeing a battle fury coming out from the spaceless void. Uh, yeah, if he goes battle fury, this might look ugly because right now I feel like the only build that really works for the faceless voids is uh, the mask of madness into shadow blade. If you try to deviate, it just looks so awful. You're so slow. Uh, in getting online, and you need to be getting kills with, the, with those chronosters every single time. Well, it is 
a hero that can burst the warlock down, so you might have that uh, the, the the capability of bursting either the Magnus or the Warlock before the fight starts, and even the Sun King to some extent. So if you do that, there's the chance that you can win a fight that you otherwise wouldn't be able to. Oh, I like this. I love PA. One of my favorite heroes. This is gonna be good. That's gonna be a big problem for them. See, that's talk. You know, we talked about Faceless Boy not having a lot of damage early on, and then you get a Phantom Assassin. Who's going to make it so that you have to be picking up some way to actually, you know, hit her because of her blur, right? Yes. That's, that's so many more and items that you're just... That you're adding to the laundry list of things that you want on this Faceless Void. I, I mean, there's still a Suits Hero, right? What can they pick up that... That deals with that? Like, look at this lineup from Pain. This is a scary draft. I was liking Midas like Club's draft until we got up to the Faceless Void, but... Hmm. What do they get for them? They, they need something with very short cooldowns, and then they can keep on fighting and uh, getting kills with the Scarif Mage and Clockwork. Mm -hmm. Lena wouldn't be bad, although she struggles with gap closers like Sentinel and PA. She's very low armor. She's get sliced in half if she's up against a PA. Mm -hmm. Especially with Empower. Yeah. Do you have? Okay. Did you have this? Oh, they take it out anyways. There's not gonna be any, Lena. But do you mm -hmm. ever? Did you have the commercials about Tootsie Pops when you were a kid? No. What is that? Uh, so it's a, it's a lollipop that we have here in America. Um, that's got like a chocolatey, chewy center, like Tootsie Roll center, and then it's just a regular lollipop on the outside. Right. And there used to be these cartoons where it was like, how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? And it was this old owl with an axe. It's like, oh, one, a two, a three, and then he just bites down and he says three. And this poor kid who's asking the owl just got gypped out of his lollipop. But like every time I see, you know, someone who's going to have these big old crits, uh, I get, I think of that thing. Like, how many crits does it take to get to the center of a, uh, a mid or whatever, who, whoever they're jumping on? And I think if the Lena was picked up there, it was going to be a one, a two, a three, if you're lucky. All right. Oh. The Quop is also a very low armor hero, but has the disengage. Uh, so it's gonna be a Tavo Magnus. I I like this. You know, usually I feel like they they could just give it to Weha. What happens though is that they have a Faceless Void, very weak laner. Usually Magnus suffers because he's a weak laner himself. But I feel like that matchup's gonna be kind of a farm fest between Magnus and Faceless Void. Pain Gaming, they're okay with that because they have the huge HFN Phantom Assassin farming. They have the push on Weha with the Death Prophet. I feel like they have a very balanced draft. I feel like they have awesome cosmetics. And it's hard not to give the advantage to pain here. I, I'm just, I'm sorry. I, I'm looking at these hats right now, and my Magnoceros has just become an elephant. Excuse me? My immersion? <laughs> what is this hat? Come on, he is not a woolly mammoth. Uh, I mean, let me, let me analyze it. Yeah, he definitely looks like, uh, like an elephant. Yep. This is mask, right? It's yeah, his, it's the mask. mask. It's the mask. He's like going to a masquerade with this mask. He's not even it's himself. It's a prank. It's a prank. Man. Why can't you be comfortable, you know, in your own skin, Magnus? You are a beautiful Magnoceros. You don't need to be an elephant. I mean, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna, you know, put him down if that's what he identifies as, but... I mean, he had a, he had a tough childhood. Come on. I didn't know that. Just How am I supposed fun. to know Just his childhood? Fun. Actually, I do know, but yeah, the lore. <laughs> the lore. Good grief. Okay, so, Mendy, let, let's check the lanes here. It's going to be a Quap versus ADP. A slightly Quap favorite, but by it's like 55 45 for the Quap. Then you're going to have Faceless Void and I guess the Clockwork? That's, that's awkward. Like, they have two melee cores and one melee support, so who you send with the faceless boy? Like, that clockwork doesn't really offer much as well. This is gonna be awkward. I I feel like your lanes are gonna suffer. That's very important to win your lane against pain. Very, very important. You gotta put pressure, and this is, we talk about this. I feel like I say that a lot. I need to figure out another way of phrasing this. I'm working on it, guys. I'm trying to get better every cast, but, uh, there's so much pressure placed on Weha. There's so much pressure placed on HFN because, you know, he's the guy you got to watch. This is one of the top cores, in my opinion, currently actually in the international scene as well. But you focus all your attention on these two lanes, and then you've got Tavo. 
who is the best offlaner in South America, in my opinion. Very close runner-up is Laposa. But these th you just have these three cores that are so powerful that you have to put so much pressure on, focus really, really hard. Where do you go? How do you do that? You've only got so many heroes. Yeah, that's that, that's a tough problem to solve. And usually what you do is you try to draft to win your lane. And I don't feel like that's exactly what's happening here. I feel like they were scared of giving the Faceless Void to Pain. And that might have hindered their draft more than they would like to. That Faceless Void, you know, I know that Mandy likes a hero. He's a great Faceless Void player. But when you're playing against a team like Pain, you're never gonna get to that strong faceless void. You're gonna get destroyed in lane, and you're gonna be a sad little purple man. Uh, but, I mean, I'm not saying I'm not saying that that's what's gonna happen, but like you're playing versus pain, and you don't have a strong lane. This is a problem, and he he's already here, scouted by three pain heroes. All I can imagine when you say that is a sad little purple man, because faceless void he doesn't have a face, right? <laughs> I just imagine uh, him, like, either one of his teammates, like, <laughs> slapping a sticker on him of, like, a frowny face, or, like, they're just drawing a sad face on him as well. He can draw himself. He's a That's independent true. purple man. But how does he know what a face looks like? He has never had a face. Wow, that's deep. I know, right? Look, look at King RD. He's just playing around. Nice skewer over to the side. And here you go. Oh, He's gonna no. be the first blood. Ooh, and Duster. God, look at the, the tips come out. Everybody's right. having fun. <laughs> That's the problem. Like, this lane is so awkward. You don't have a lot of damage. The Clockwork, he cannot harass those heroes uh, in safety. Because he has to come close to use the, the cogs, and then you just get secured up. You get Burrow Stroke. It's not fun. He defends it very low here. In comes the Shadow Word. No push sword back. I, I'm just remembering yesterday. I know chat made fun of the way that I laughed. But, uh... When Duster went to heal HFN and he accidentally clicked himself and the pings just came out, these oh, rapids just like, are you serious? I thought it was really funny. Apparently Chad thought that I was insane. But you know what? All the best people are a little insane, right? That is true. And I, <laughs> I, and I say that unironically. <laughs> I, I, I'm legit unironically, okay? Uh, all right, that's nice, Cox. Does take a lot of mana out of Tavo here. Uh, actually, no mana. But he has two mana. Poor Duster is just getting bullied by the Skywrath Mage in this bottom lane. He's already had to use the Shadow Word on himself. He's making some space though for his Phantom Assassin, but he's completely out of uh, he's out of regen, other than the uh, passives that the Mango gives off. Yeah. Uh, this might be combination. Nice cogs though. Mm, Hiko, gotta move himself away. So how's the mid matchup going? It's like Suits is uh, having a pretty comfortable lane. Is a little bit behind on CS, but has been able to bully Weeha just a little bit. DP is a great laner. It's it's very hard to all lane a DP. The Quap maybe has kill potential level five, level six, but before that, it's uh, it's pretty easy for the DP to lane this. The Spirit Siphon so annoying. Mm, RZS is chipping down pretty low, especially with those Fatal Bonds. Already healing up. And actually, something that I mean, we might not get to that, but I want to see uh, if PA gets the triple dagger count and you get empowered on top of that. Oh, that's get nasty. On top of that. That's nasty. Oh, he go, he go, my friend. I feel like they're baiting him every time, right? So, Mandy, he's getting bullied. He's trying to just get some room to hit some creeps, and Hiko, of course, being the good support, is like, don't worry, I'll push them back, but then he pushes them back, and they just close in on him, because Mandy's, you know, he's got that capability with his Q, right? So he can just run himself out, but poor Hiko, he's got no mobility early on. Yeah. So he's got to be very he careful, also... he doesn't keep get baited in, because it's it's a recipe that keeps happening. Mandy's getting bullied, Hiko comes forward, he's trying to be a, trying to be a bro. And then they immediately just wail on him. They wait for him. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and he also doesn't have any move speed items, so he decided to get the stout shield and a lot of regen. 
but without move speed, it's always scary because that Sand King might be able to bro strike you. And then you get the skewer back. Not happy. Can I get this kill on RZS? Yes. This is, this is oh, rough. the dagger and the fatal bonds. Tip nice. comes out. Yeah, Quaff actually got bullied out, like you're saying. Top lane, they're fighting back and forth. King RD sitting pretty low. I'm not sure if they'd be able to get this kill, though, especially with that Burrow Strike. It's pretty hard to lock him down, although they have the battery assault, but he's sticking very close to the wave. Yeah, look at Hiko. He wants it, but he just, he just can't yeah. figure out how to get there right now. Duster forced all the way back home. Look at him. He's got he's got his stick. He's got boots and wards queued up at the very least, right? So it's not as poor as he appears. Yeah, he got. Uh, I feel like he got that kill. The kill one. Yeah, the kill one. Hiko with Duster. It's like RCS making a rotation, trying to get this death profit off of uh, the Quap's booty. Arcane Rune. That's pretty good for either a Quap or the Scarlet Mage. But they it's do like, ping it out. Pain Cobble's about it. so low, though. I mean, you got an Arcane Rune, you got a Skywrath Mage. He's got to know, though, right? Do they have... They don't have Ancient yeah, Seal yet, though. So he might be... Oh, he's very low on mana, though, too, right? He's got two mangoes. Depends. Oh, and while well, bottom lane, Sword is all alone, and uh, Duster and HFN will take advantage of that. Tavo, again, top lane. He's got some mangoes if he really needs to try to charge out. But this becomes the issue. You rotate... Oh... <laughs> <laughs> Tried to go for uh, for that snatch there. Doesn't quite manage it. Oh, Burrow Strike comes out. King RD doesn't manage to clip anyone. The Caustic will proc though. They, uh, okay, you guys don't care. He's got Concussive. Uh, one thing that I that I didn't mention is about the PA matchup versus Beastmaster. Usually you think of Beastmaster as the... Oh, they're actually diving into something here. Level 4. Second. Level 4 Faceless Voyage. Chasing after King RD. <laughs> Man, he's taunting. Look at oh, that. <laughs> he's styling on him right now, Bowie. He's playing. He's having that. fun. So, my concern now is HFN's having a good lane. HFN's currently top of the CS, as to be expected. He's just gonna jump on Sword every opportunity he gets to push him back. Because he's alone yeah, now. This is a disaster in terms of lanes because Magnus, he's like, there's a reason you never see Magnus. And when you see Magnus, he is in the mid lane because he's a weak laner. Right now, he's fourth in the CS. He's actually uh, pretty much tied up with the faces, right? That's not what you want. And uh, I guess this Quap, she's going to have to do so much. And I guess the Beastmaster Skyrath Mage is also another combo that will have to get kill after kill after kill because this is already a 2k good advantage. And with the Empower, those scores are going to farm like crazy. I don't know what they're hoping to do to Wii here. Yeah, already you see that uh, he goes backing off. Looks like the Skywrath Mage headed back. Because they have that that ward over here on the side, Bowie. They have vision on them. They know that they're waiting. And they don't have hookshot. Yeah. Like, you really kind of need that hookshot to to grab hold of the Death Prophet. And he goes only level 3. Oh, look at this bottom lane. Look at HFN. He's just... He's having a good time. They fort yeah. up their stuff. It's tough. It looks like Midas, they're looking for kills everywhere, but they just don't find any openings. They, it's either vision coming from pain or just great positioning. Uh, good matchups as well. Like the PA can just bully the Beastmaster, and there's not a lot of carries that do that. But in this specifically matchup, like since Mandy. Since you just can't leave Clockwork and Faceless Void uh, alone there because they cannot farm, Skyrim Mage has to rotate, and now Beastmaster is in huge trouble because they cannot uh, enable any of the cores with dual lanes, and that's a huge problem in this patch. It's a really nice draft coming out from Pain, especially when you consider yeah. you've got this Clockwork, right? Clockwork is a good position for it, but you've got King RD who can Burrow Strike himself out. You've got, of course, this Magnus who's going to be a skewer out. PA can just leap away if needed. The only people that you can really, you know, hold into place would be the Death Prophet or, uh, or the Warlock. And if you lose your support, it's, you know, whatever. Oh, Hiko, he's mad that King RD managed to take that rune. Uses the Battery Assault. 
Needs to be careful though. Yeah, the cogs come out and then <laughs> he's trapped in with Sand King. He's gonna have to TP himself away. They don't have. Oh, the Crypt Swarm at the last second. Followed up with the Caustic. Takes him down. Nicely done. That's our first exorcism, right? Yeah, let's see how much damage they can do. Silence comes out. They'll just push them off the tower. Well, did you go around though? Coming out from suits. Nice play. Fairy fire. Gonna have to pop though. It's looking like he's gonna get chased after these fishies. And they'll take down the queen. No, I I don't like what Zeus did there. He gets the kill, but that's a support sand king. I guess you protect your tower a little bit, but I, I'm not sure it's worth it. Now that cooldown, two minutes without Pop being able to make any plays. Everyone's farming like crazy. I guess you do have Mandy, but where's the follow-up to that damage? They don't have Mystic Flare, they don't have... Like, Beastmaster doesn't offer follow-up, he offers Lockdown. And that's what I was concerned about in the draft. Yeah, yeah, that's one of the many problems the Fitness Boy has as a hero. I am pleased to say, though, it's he doesn't have the Battle Fury queued up, which I am nice. very, yeah. very happy about. I don't... That's... <laughs> Here you go. Don't play around with the assassin. And he pings out. He's like, uh, why aren't we doing anything about this, guys? We should really be uh, trying to do something here. The TP comes out from Mandy. What's he going to do, though? What is he even going to do? Uh, they do have those smoke heroes there. They might be able to. Well, they use the Chronosphere. The Quap is nearby. They don't have Mystic Flare online, though. Look at this. It just jumps forward, blinks out. Duster's still alive. Just barely, though. He will get taken out. Tavo making this rotation down to the bottom lane. Doesn't have RP. No, it's gonna try to hide in the... This is looking actually pretty good now for the side of Midas. They're taking a decent fight, but they will actually lose Mandy, which is not what they want. If they can get HFN here, though, and they will looking a little bit better. King RD gonna get chopped down by those axes and Duster. Oh, Duster. Oh, baby. Bye-bye. I guess that's how it got kills. You rotate five of your heroes. They knew there was no exorcism, so the rotation from Weeha is pretty much non-existent. But that's good. Uh, the problem though, look at the net worth. Even though they killed so many heroes, it's still a pain game and advantage. You're not gonna get any objectives out of that. So, you rotate everyone. Yes, you get kills. It does stop the bling a little bit, but it's still such an overwhelming adventure, I think. They're gonna have to keep doing that, and uh, ideally get some towers. I didn't expect the five-man rotation, because at first I was like, alright, that's cool, you've got, you know, poor Hiko, who's at, like, very low health. Oh, in fact, Hiko. top lane, Hiko, Hiko, oh. Can he get out? No, the shockwave comes in from Tavo. Mandy's here, he doesn't have Chronosphere, they're feeling really, really bully right now. They actually use the RP on him, they'll jump forward again using HFN with a Burrow Strike. And that other person about to TP to the tower immediately will change their mind. And now, here's the thing. This is a Catapult rune, they have empowered Catapults and they have Exorcism on them. This might be two towers for ping gaming. I don't know how they go for it right now. You don't have that, uh, you don't have the Chronosphere online. You don't have that much damage on the Faceless Void. Uh, you do have the Mystic Flare, right? But you I, I feel like the second that Skywrath Mage shows his face, HFN's just be like, nice to meet you. Jump in, dagger, crit, all of that stuff. Because if you've seen how much he's done to Hiko alone with the damage, and Clockwork is the tanky person on the team, Bowie. Yeah, oh, they scout the Duster. He has golden. They need to take him down. Yeah, he goes. Opens up with the battery assault. It's gonna try to separate Duster so he can't get that rock off. The silence comes down. They might be able to burst him down here. That's good targeting. They will be able to take him down. Since jumping for it, Mystic Flare gets used over here on Weehan. They have the Chronosphere, and there's the damage. When the stars align, it looks pretty good for Midas. But we do have cooldowns coming up again, and uh, that's gonna be something you're a little worried about because they get this kill again. No objectives. Yep. They are fighting in their side of the map. They don't have a lot of push. The only real push comes from the Beastmaster, and he is not doing super hot right now. Um, okay, so oh, they have gold. They still have the rock, and they deem it necessary to take down Seuss. Using that Chaotic Offering and taking the tower. So it looks like we're probably just going to see them trade. Although the TP comes out. Weeha's not ready to give this up. Does need to be careful. There are a lot of heroes there. No, uh, they're holding on to that point for hook shot. Actually, it's gonna be the cuss of shot. Silence comes through. Look at these TPs coming out though in mass. They do cancel it out though. Looks like they uh, 
They figure that having Tavo there will be enough, especially the way that Midas is immediately retreating. Oh, and like, yeah, they, they got a couple of kills. It looks even, right? Nine and eight. But look at the gold advantage. That's already 6k gold. A 6k goalie 13 minutes in, and it's only gonna get bigger because Empower is still level 2. HFN is not even farming as fast as he can, and I love uh, the Mask of Madness build when you have Empower. It's just an insane amount of burst. You do have the life steal so you can farm the jungle, and you can. Oh, sorry. Is that their AFK? I literally, he literally was just was. sitting there. Maybe he took a little power nap. He was Maybe he was uh, buying an item. That could be it. It's surprising. Like, all of a sudden, they just. They hit him a couple times with a couple auto attacks, and then they, they threw spells at him. Double damage bottom. There is no vision. Look at the wards by pinging. They have deep wards. Doesn't doesn't look like Midas actually knows about it. A little bit of a pause. So let's see, what do we have online? We've got Exorcism online, we've got the Epicenter online, and we've got Reverse Polarity, we've got the Mystic Flare, the Hookshot, Roar, and uh, looks like that Chronosphere is going to be off cooldown in about 12 seconds, so I don't know if they want... So, <sighs> this, be this is the deal when you've got all of these really nice ultimates, is that they also come with cooldowns. So... If they go in for a fight now, if, you know, Mandy decides, yeah, you know, I'm going to go join up the rest of my team, use the Chronosphere, and they end up using the Mystic Flare and that, uh, that Sonic Wave, everything's going to be in cooldown. They can definitely, oh boy, Duster, Duster, that was not the place to TP. They had a ward right there. Oh. Uh, what? Okay, I was about to say, I was like, guys, he's not dead yet. There's the jump forward. Oh, but they managed to... To slow down that RP, Hiko, trying to separate from everyone. He's sitting in the middle of all of these heroes, though. Gonna allow HFN to get that double kill. That felt very you're awkward. Actually, you're actually missing the play here. That was a great bait by Duster. He lures two heroes, gives his life for two supports. Nice play by Duster. What a, you know, what a support. He buys all the wards, even gives his life to get some extra kills. They do find Mandy here. Oh. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if that. Yeah, oh, Mandy's God. still dead. Okay. Oh no, he's still. He looks like he's gonna run himself out, but it looks like he could, he's getting Mandy baited quite a few times here during this game, and he's gonna fall. Even it doesn't even make a Madness difference that he survives there. The fact that the Chronosphere gets wasted and they're fighting in their own side of the map while they have Exorcism. Like, that's the problem. They're gonna be... Oh, they're hard-pressed here. I, I don't know what they do. What, what is Beastmaster going for? Uh, something, anything. Trying to get rid of uh, HFM, but they turn it around immediately as a big crit. RZS, that's a double kill. Oh. This PA is so strong right now. How do you... How do you do anything against it? They don't have enough damage, even if you get that lockdown, right? Yeah, they they run into the Roche Pit. They're not afraid. They've got a Magnus. You've got a Revolve's Polarity. There's, there's no, no Exorcism. Problem. And there's no Chaotic Offering. Like, that's... This is the best opportunity they might get for a fight with two of the big ultimates down. But, like you said, there's no Chronosphere up. Eco God? The Roche too? Oh, maybe. Let's see what this little toaster can do. He's looking! Oh, the oh, King no. RD at the last second! King RD, God. He'll turn back around. He's going to punish Hiko here for even thinking about trying to take that Roche. But looks like he's going to be all right because they found bigger fish to fry. They found themselves suits. Well, where's uh, where's the Tusk Wasteland he likes to spend up? Well, I tried. <laughs> that is uh, the appropriate time for that. Oh, yeah. The rest of Midas better be... Uh, Getting themselves back into that base. I don't think you want to be dealing with any of this outside of the high ground tower. I wanted to see the the bad manner just as I just as I envisioned by Faceless Void, but I'm not sure Mandy has like a silver level on Faceless Void. What is the what is the line? Just as I envisioned. <laughs> like when when like everyone dies, mm -hmm. and, uh, you can use it. You know, ironically or not. 
It's rough. They don't get high ground here. Pain gaming. They're gonna retreat. I, I'm just. Oh, the Sonic wave, but they go in for the dodge. The Yules comes out as well. Oh, look at they might be able to actually burst down the Death Prophet this time. But Tavo, he finds himself three different heroes, and they get a double kill on HFN. Mandy frantically trying to run himself out. They still have some vision on him. King RD. He's hunting. He's they looking. Yes, because of the fatal bomb. They're just gonna let him walk away. Are you serious? Oh no, HFN. HFN isn't going anywhere. Not when there's kills to get. Dropping those oh. items. Doing the BM. Suit's gonna have to blink himself into that base. Have the mercy, HFN. HFN. Yeah, so... What can Midas do to turn this game around? They, they did go for the right play there. Killing a Death Prophet, ignoring the Aegis on true HFN. And I feel like that's that's their target. They have to QDP every single time, because uh, Weha is the hero that offers push. Oh, they use the roar over HFN. They're trying to get into position. I don't know if they have the damage though. He's way Especially now with that heal. Yeah, he's got the heal. He's got the mask of madness. Weha's just walking right into the space, throwing out the exorcism. They don't have roar up because they've already used it on HFN. Oh, if I was One RZS, minute. I'd be oh, so no. nervous right now. I don't want to come anywhere near this HFN. Oh, I hear an epicenter channeled up, and it looks like King RD has found himself a friend. It's gonna be Suits, and he just barely is still alive, but that last little love tap will take him down. Yule Scepter comes out from the Death Prophet. They've got the Burrow Strike. Hiko's gonna get removed. They had the buyback come out from Suits here, but this HFN, this Phantom Assassin, strong, independent woman. Just diving into this base here. Has itself an Aegis. No cares in the world. Easy breezy, as a Wind Ranger would say. Yeah, it is. I mean, he even went for the Battle Free at the end. So he has so much damage right now. He bursts everyone. There's no one that can really withstand the Blink Strike, Mask of Madness combo. So uh, it's, it's rough. I feel like Midas, they kind of set up themselves for for this at the end like yeah this is a hero that your core player likes but it just it's so rough to make faces what work in this meta it, it, it really is you need to have two better matchups in other lanes and they didn't pop is okay-ish first death profit but it's definitely not a win and in the other lane you had the beastmaster skyrath mage which is actually pretty good but uh they had because of the faceless voice skyrath mage had to leave bottom so you don't have a strong lane anymore, and the PA just got all she wanted. Oh, that's a bait and a half right now. These Fatal Bonds are just taking everybody out as HFN just wails away. You ask how many, how many attacks until you get a crit? Uh, it was actually two. It was just two. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how Midas does this at this point. I hate to say it. I never like to lose hope. I like cheering for the underdogs, but... This PA currently 14, 1, and 7, 14k net worth. Whereas the next closest on the side of Midas is 7.5. This is some feels bad Mandota. And look at that. Mandy takes one step inside of his. Like just towards the edge of his base and just immediately gets obliterated. The GG call comes out. Not before HFN gets to pad those stats one more time. Yeah, so it was it was rough. I, I can't say much besides the draft. I feel like Midas with those, they, they started pretty well with the Skyrim Mage Beastmaster, but it kind of, I mean, you, you said it yourself, like you actually like their draft into the Faceless White pick. And with that hero, not only they can pick the Magnus, so that's a hero you never see, but when you see the Faceless White, you're like, well, they have weak lanes, so let's just get this. Really off laner, let's just enable everyone, and that's kind of what happened. Midas, they had some glimpses of brilliance, but kills, they, they don't matter in the early game. What matters is objectives, Spain gaming, they were getting every tower, and Midas, they were winning some fights, but in their side of the map, it, it just, it's not enough. So I believe with this victory, Pain Gaming has secured themselves a spot in playoffs, correct? Yes. So that's got to be feeling pretty good for them. Midas Club, I don't think they're quite out of it yet. I think they've, uh... They have another chance to redeem themselves, right? Yeah, they have three games. Is this the third one? 
trying to remember. We've had a lot of <laughs> remakes and reschedules back and forth. Yeah. Uh, looks like they've done one game against Infamous, where Infamous won. Uh, they went up against Taurus, and they got a win off of Taurus, actually. So that probably keeps them in the running here. Midas versus SG. SG won. And they've oh, that's their just... fourth match. Yeah, it's their fourth match. All right. Yeah, so they have to win. What's their next uh, Their next opponent? Their we next opponent. Predator. Hmm, that's going to be interesting. It'll be interesting to see if Midas Club is able to kind of unravel the enigma that is drafting against uh, Aten and Jamery's cores, because there's so many heroes that you really have to uh, ban out and consider. But we've got lots of South American Dota today, guys. This is a super fun game for uh, Bowie and I. We just finished up Midas Club versus Pain Gaming, and the next one coming up is going to be Infamous versus SG. So stick around. <laughs> 